Bye, everybody. I am realizing I haven't done a Detroit vlog in quite a while, and I've never actually taken you along with me in the wintertime ever. So I have a couple really fun things planned for this weekend, and I thought it would be the perfect opportunity for you to spend a weekend with me, seeing what life is like in Detroit during the winter. I look at my home workouts, cooking at home. I have an influencer event on Saturday, so I'm super excited to take you along with me. So finishing up my daily journal, I don't know about you, did it feel like it was easier to journal on a regular basis when you were younger? I'm not sure what motivation, what energy I had, but I always had the time to write down the tea when I was younger. And so I'm really working towards doing a lot of brain dumps, especially now that I'm in, especially now as an entrepreneur, there's so many different ideas and so many different directions. It can be easy to get distracted by like all the dope girlies out there doing amazing things. And knowing myself, like I like to try things. I like to, I like to be experimental. So, so it can be really easy for me to get distracted. Like, ooh, oh my God, like she did something dope. I wanna try that or ooh, okay, that's a really cool edit or something new. And I've realized that has made it hard for you to kind of figure out what to expect here sometimes because that's always just been a part of who I am, but not a part that I've spoken to you openly about. Like, I just like to try things. I like to do things. I've never minded to talk to any of my friends, like moving to the beat of my own drum and not really worrying about what that looks like to everybody else as long as it made sense and makes me happy without harming others. I really wanna make that point because I do feel like in this era of like manifest babes and move how you wanna move and be your villain, there's nothing wrong with standing up for yourself and owning your space. I absolutely encourage all of that and something I am trying to work on myself. But, but sometimes it can be a little frustrating when you are a considerate person feeling like I was very considerate of your feelings and you were not considerate of mine. So I try even in my selfish era to not truly do harm onto others just really care less about how they perceive how I move. So this is like the last kind of thing I like to do with my mornings. You saw that I worked out already. My goal is always to work out more than I don't. That means that at least four times a week, I'm trying to move my body. But with having a dog, and I know she loves the walkies, I know she loves to be outside, even in this miserable weather, I actually do end up moving my body every day of the week and usually multiple times a day. 
from walking her in the morning, doing whatever workout for the day. And then if you've watched my other vlogs, I also walk her in the afternoon as well. So the love hate of setting your own schedule as an entrepreneur is really trying to make sure that you're picking the right things that make the most sense. For me, that looks like a lot of my work is actually done Monday and Tuesday. I do most of my filming those days. And then, and then Wednesday I like to use as a reset day, slowing down a little bit, making sure that I've gotten most of what needs to get done for the week done. Thursday usually ends up being more like a mall, get out the house day, find something to do, some networking. And then today is a mix. I actually, with the snow, do want to go sit in a coffee shop. I find I find just that change of pace like everybody else does help me be a little bit more productive. There's a lot of there's a lot of admin work I need to do, responding to emails, send out some pitches, doing a little bit of research and scripting for these kinds of videos. You know, we don't just come on here like doing whatever, doing whatever unless it's really a vlog. And also because it started as a creative space, like I mentioned earlier, I love to play around with stuff. So I actually use my Fridays to do passion projects. So if there's a brand that has gifted me something, I actually do my best to create some content around it, even though it's unpaid, whether or not I actually share it on my social channels to push myself to push myself to be more creative than just snapping a quick selfie, holding up a product to the camera. Not that those aren't classic standbys, but what I've really found for a lot of brands wanting to work with me is they like that I go the extra step to be a little bit more creative. I'm not doing just the same kind of poses and things that the other girlies do. So finding unique ways to show off the products, plus really more focusing on evergreen content. I have just noticed that true legacy, like real brands, don't just pop up overnight. It is a lot of years of dedication and work and really building that foundation. And I really have worked hard to make sure my content fits in that category. You'll notice a lot of my popular videos aren't recent videos. They're videos that are a couple of years old. And even on my TikTok, there are videos I have posted years ago that are still bringing in views to this day. And that, and that if you're a content creator, if you're an influencer, really is your power, right? Like we are not salespeople. What we do really falls under marketing. We're focused on reach. We're really trying to make sure that people are seeing the product seeing the product, learning about the product, and hopefully loving the product as well. So if you are somebody doing what I do, that's absolutely the strong point you want to keep in mind with brands. However, a lot of brands try to approach us saying like, we're going to pay you when something sells. And that truly just isn't, and that truly has never been how I've approached influencing and how I've approached content creation. I've always been more, I've always really loved the creative side, finding fun ways to show off that product, finding unique yet timeless visuals that help the brand stand out and create that legacy. It's really never been about buy this, buy this, buy this. Like you have seen my videos, I'm definitely the first one to be like, if you don't love that thing, if you feel like you don't need it, don't buy it. If you feel like it's not working for you, don't buy it. I'm the first one to tell you to save your money. So, and so to remind myself of that, I do, like I said, try to have more playful content days like this. Where the goal really is for me to push myself creatively and taking new styles of photos. So I'm gonna put on some boots, bundle up. I think I want a breakfast sandwich from this spot in Ferndale called Red Hook. They have the most delicious biscuit egg sandwich that's really calling me right now so i think we'll go there
baby. Are you trying to walk today? You're not feeling the boots? What are we thinking? Want to hit this afternoon walk? Are you going to be mad at the boots if I put the boots on you? Hmm? Hmm? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? You want to try? And then if you just hate it, we can come back? I think we should try. Yeah. Okay. Come on. Let's try. Let's go. You want to go for a walk? Oh, oh. A walk. You want walking? You want. Okay, I'm going to go without you. You want to go? You want to go outside? Hey, don't run. Got that fresh off the cold glow. If you did not watch my Afro Nation vlog, then you probably missed that. I'm a very minimal girly when it comes to all kinds of beauty stuff. And that's because it took me a long time to heal from feeling like I needed makeup. I had moderate acne all the way up until I was about 28, 29. And you can see that in my old videos, the acne was usually across my chin, on occasion my forehead. And I was just so self-conscious about that. Like I would literally skip out on going out, going to parties because I was so self-conscious about my acne and if I couldn't cover it with makeup in a way that made it seem like it wasn't there I literally wouldn't go and I really committed I would say somewhere around 29 that I just didn't want to do any of that anymore I really just wasn't trying to have to stress out about looking perfect all the time I wanted to really learn to love myself in every single state and a huge part of that was learning not to feel like I needed makeup all the time to be put together to look on point. So I rarely wear a full face of makeup unless it's like a night out or something really special that I want to put in that time and effort. But for the everyday, even for just like little events like this, getting ready for my friend's gallery, I'm so excited for her by the way. She has been, she has been doing this for a while. She's also an engineer at the place that I used to work at. So unless it's a big event and also unless the event's kind of like, I'm trying to be there for influencing if that makes sense like not just going to go check it out um but more like i'm working then i might go that extra step with my makeup but since i finally got my skincare routine together and my skin has looked really really clear i really haven't felt as self-conscious or the need to rely on makeup and i also learned i also learned that i didn't need as much makeup as i thought i did and truly to find a good concealer that was really the cheat code i needed in college when i was just using whatever foundation y'all literally <laughs> looking like a oompa loompa because trying to find drugstore makeup when you're in this skin tone where you're not light you're not dark you're not olive you're not really fair i ended up looking yellow or orange 90 percent of the time and i would overdo my makeup covering all my freckles then it would be obvious that i was wearing makeup because i was so busy trying to hide the acne when really i just needed a good concealer and so now if i do have a pimple like i have one that's going on up here i have a little baby one here I will just cover that with concealer and then go in and add what I want to add for whatever my look is. Like tonight, I really just want that strawberry donut glow that I like to have. So a little bit of blush. I'm going to go in with some highlighter. Literally have been using this for years and that that's not a sign that I don't wear makeup often because I feel as though I shouldn't have products that you can no longer find on the market. But here we are because I haven't run out and I like the way it looks. So why would I buy something new? So whenever I am doing makeup, it's really just about giving myself a natural glow. I've really leaned into just using makeup to enhance what's already there. I really don't focus on creating a new nose shape, sculpting out the jawline, things like that um, for like an everyday look for something like this. Again, if it was for an evening or for like an event event, I would be trying to snatch the gods. I would be trying to give a beat that baby one, two, you know. Cause on the low when i have the patience i'd be putting together some makeup looks my eyeshadow game is actually very slept on but it's also because i just don't have the patience <laughs> and i'm deciding if i want to do a lip liner i love the lip liner lip gloss combo in theory i hate it in practice i hate i hate when the line disappears i hate having to reapply my lip gloss every three seconds y'all girls y'all really deserve medals for like realizing ooh my lip gloss is low ooh my liner is off because I will forget and be looking crazy by the end of the day, which is why I just usually don't do that. <laughs> Let me get this edge together. And this is all it takes for me to get my hair ready now. Like, this is all it takes to get ready with my hair now. This is all it takes. A little bit of water, a little more mousse to really just shape these edges, and I'm done. 
compared to the stress. If you go back and watch some of my old hair videos, just the amount of work and effort the long hair was only to really get like one good day out of it. If I'm truly honest, I could maybe have like two good hair days, but after that, it was just so much work trying to refresh and basically I would just have to rewash it all over again to get the same curls and it wasn't and my hair really wasn't that healthy plus I ended up just wearing it in a bun 99% of the time. So not to convince you anymore but just the fact that literally I'm done now getting re getting my hair ready that's all it took. I'm pretty sure I'm not going back. Let me go ahead and get dressed because I am trying to get out of here in the next 10 minutes to make sure I make it on time because I am the on-time friend especially for events like this because I know how much time and effort people put into their events and I really hate when you are that person that put the time and effort in and you're waiting there and I hate that feeling like I put all this together I'm ready for everyone to show up and you're just like waiting so I really try for my friends events especially for stuff like this to be one of the first people to arrive so they're not sitting there alone and awkward or uncomfortable for a really big moment like this is a really big moment and so I want to show my friends that I value them by being there on time for their big events let me go get dressed here is the final fit I always love to reach for this and other story sweater dress it's just so easy it's so fun especially for an art gallery and this is where I will say I do get really frustrated and I join y'all with some of the like winter outfit inspo because babes realistically they are snow on the ground there's ice on the ground Heels are not going to be for everybody. I have on my very comfortable, very easy block heeled boots. I'm not trying to trip and fall and die. No idea if there is a coat check, but I'm wearing this bash coat because I just love that like cream play to tie in the boots and of course just kind of make this sweater dress pop for the bag. Bringing Jack out to play, this will really make the shoes pop when the jacket comes off. So I just have a nice warm, warm, but easy outfit to go to the art gallery and see my girl's artwork. So let's get going. Reunited. such a good time last night i really really enjoy being able to support my friends in person at events like this because i know it's so scary to put yourself out there like this is the first time she's really had her art on display at a gallery when i first started putting myself on the internet to do what i do now it was terrifying you know and 
and at my big age of 30 i have found literally like the only way to get through that is to just confront your fear and either the worst case scenario does happen but a lot of the times it actually does it and you are very well received when you show up as yourself so now that i'm through most of my morning routine usually after me and anna go for our walkies i will do a deep stretch which i am still gonna do however i get to take you with me to core lp fitness in berkeley for an influencer event very excited because i know pilates is no joke and i am saying that as somebody who is i don't want to say like a gym rat right obviously i work out from home now but but i know with as active as i am and also being a retired crossfit girly because if you didn't know actually my mom who is a breast cancer survivor she doesn't love to talk about that which i get because obviously it was a very hard experience on her but the fact that she's overcome it and after surviving breast cancer got into crossfit in her 40s and still does it now in her 50s please please so she got me into crossfit for quite a few years kind of out of college and then a little bit maybe a couple of years ago but after i tore my acl the second time in 2018 it was a wrap because it's very hard to find a gym with like good programming i could go deep into that so because i ended up having to get rid of my editor it just was not working out how i was hoping so i'm back to editing my own videos which means that's how i'm going to be spending the rest of my morning before i take you with me to core lp fitness hopefully i don't die i know that's how lori harvey got her body and that's great for her but I'm not sure I need to suffer that much, but but maybe I'll be singing a different tune after this class. Quick look at the fit. This set is from H&M. You've definitely seen me wear this before. They do a pretty decent job when it comes to workout wear. I will say their leggings could use a little bit of work but i love their sports bra tops they're just so comfortable they go with everything i even wear these as like everyday tops their crop jacket is from urban outfitters i always have a crop zip up or two because gym girlies you already know then for the sneakers just my very easy nike running sneakers because i'm going to be taking them off and because it is cold out in the d this puffer jacket also from h&m it really actually does a great job for most of the weather even around like zero to ten degrees it keeps me very very warm walking anna even for a long period of time plus it's really fun and very easy just to throw in and go so let's get headed to core lp hi Kiki. how you doing because i never look this cute at a gym working out ever i'm not gonna look this cute after the fact so appreciate it now Freshly showered in my winter work onesie. Yes, you heard that term right. It is 16 degrees here, so I am cold. And this onesie, not only is it cute, but it's cozy. And that is what I need right now because I still need to finish 
editing my video to get posted for tomorrow but diamond was so generous the core lp so it's not quite pilates but girl you saw me shaking and quaking i love those kinds of workouts like i do not mind being a newbie i do not mind looking bad i like having someone correct me and my form i really do miss that so i know going into the rest of 2024 i'm definitely going to try to find one or two group classes like that to really push me outside of what i do for my home workout let me show you what diamond gave us in our goodie bag and then i'm gonna get back to editing first up we got these flamingo disposable dermaplane erasers i have always been on the fence about dermaplaning my face i probably did it once way back in college back before all of this stuff was a fad i also did needle rolling back in college like think 2000 think 2000 and like 11 2000 and like 12 i was definitely doing this kind of stuff then and i really love flamingo brand i actually use their razors because they get such a close shave i just feel like they're some of the best affordable razors on the market if you've ever dermaplane please leave me your tips in the comments it's not something that i do regularly because i don't want to do any serious damage to my skin so i'm really particular about the products and things that i use on my face for that reason next up from dove i know that diamond was doing a really cool partnership with dove plant care i haven't purchased dove in a while but the one product i really have been loving by them that really has been transformative let me go grab it from their body love line the exfoliate away specifically with salicylic acid i have had some back knee popping up ever since covid honestly and even before i cut my hair and i know part of that has been working out at home and working out more in like tank tops and sleeveless tops when at the gym i would normally wear short sleeves so that kept my skin pretty protected this has really helped to prevent any new back knee from popping up that is one huge part of the battle if you can prevent the acne from coming you don't really have to worry about the dark spots and fading all of that so this is something i use twice a week and it has made truly all the difference also in here some flamingo tweezers i feel like you can never have enough pairs of tweezers i have tweezers in my car tweezers in like a couple of my purses like i probably have three or four different tweezers so you can never have too many of these then a bunch of beauty minis from loctane so they're ah, we've got shower oil we've got hand lotion let's see what else Ooh. shower cream which i assume is just shower lotion shower gel okay so this is for cleaning and then the shower oil goes on after okay all right little combo pack then also a shower gel this looks like a cherry blossom oh i love the smell of cherry blossoms i'm very very excited to see what this smells like because ooh, one of my favorite scents we've got even more hand cream literally tubes of these all over the place because we are not trying to look ashy then some bar soap as well this is it does not say what scent this is Ooh, that's got a very soft scent i'm very excited because while latane is not a brand i have personally purchased from i've always heard good things so i'm really excited to actually have a chance to give them a try with that with that i'm gonna get back into editing before i take anna on walk number two still not sure what i'm feeling about dinner because i originally was gonna make myself an egg sandwich i didn't think we were gonna do brunch at berkeley commons which was delicious by the way um but i don't want to like wear myself down on eggs but i also am not trying to eat out We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Let me get back to editing and I'll take you along with me as I figure out what I'm going to do for dinner. <laughs>
fell off doing laundry gonna glue it on real quick i'm really not mad i use press on nails these are kiss brand and the static nail glue and my nails will last for easily like two weeks the key is and i understand everyone's like concern you're not using enough glue i'm gonna be a hundred percent you really do want the glue oozing out both sides making a mess because that's just what i found will keep your nails on for far far longer which is the other reason i love the static nail glue this one because it's got the brush so it makes it easier to put on a lot of glue without it actually being crazy messy and for today actually sunday i really don't make a lot of plans sunday is usually kind of like my day to duck off i keep to myself i put my phone on dnb as you saw and i'll walk the dog i'm gonna go to one of my favorite coffee shops to finish putting in all that information for the video that's going up today then i'm gonna journal i know there is a huge lions game going on today so i just feel like i'll probably stick around this way i may get the energy to take some photos it's supposed to actually be sunny and decent so i'm thinking after i get done enjoying the coffee shop doing what i gotta do i will try and shoot a couple of outfits it's so difficult living somewhere where it actually gets cold like i look at the girlies in the other states sharing their winter fashion and i'm like babes i love you i love that for you it's not gonna work here and it's not the lack of like cute outfits it's always the shoe situation and maybe it's just because i don't live in places like new york and things like that but it seems like their sidewalks are never covered with snow they always seem to have like nice clear sidewalks and that is not the case at all here in michigan like it hasn't snowed for a couple of days as you've seen with my morning walkies with anna like people just don't care so it does make it so complicated not just obviously battling like the fact that like it's only going to get up to 30 degrees today and that is considered like a good enough warm day to go outside and shoot but then you have to make sure that the location makes sense but i'm really curious actually because i have kind of seen this huge shift obviously this started in covid all the get ready with me videos that people are really kind of not shooting as much outside i'm noticing like a lot of the girlies are just staying in the house and taking their photos inside what are your thoughts when you're looking for inspiration whether it is instagram or tiktok whatever platform you use does the setting where the outfits being worn matter like do you feel like i need to see that outside of the house or is just seeing it enough i always have like prided myself that i'm like no i'm not faking the funk over here if you see me wear this outfit and i'm outside that is what i wore that day i'm not sitting here putting on outfits just to take photos and when i do batch create content it's at the end of the week because i've had all week to try out the outfits see what i liked about the outfits if there's something i would tweak before taking photos so it's never like oh i'm just gonna throw this on take some photos go home and i'm not actually wearing these things so that is what it is so i am very curious do you do you look at influencers differently if you see them outside versus just wearing their outfits inside do you even consider whether or not they wore those clothes outside do you even care i know that sometimes seeing seeing the girlies wear we just like to do this i just like to do this even even a day like today where i normally would not film i normally don't take any content unless like i it's just a really great weather day like i said in here in michigan you got you got to take the sunshine and the semi warmth when you can this would have been what i was going to wear filming or not filming i'm going to reclaim my time enjoy a thing or two that you cannot televise but if you follow me on instagram you probably know what I'm gonna indulge in today. Anyway, let's get going over to the coffee shop. I'll show you a little bit of the coffee shop over there. But here is the outfit. I have these sunnies that are from Free People. I am so obsessed with these because of the white trim. How cute. This jacket actually is from Rent the Runway. It is from Maje. I might buy it. I have been wearing this nonstop. It's so cozy, so easy. I love it. Mixing it in with neutral. So I have this lavish Alice set. I don't know. I just was feeling this today. I really was kind of feeling something a little more feminine, a little more soft. The boots are forced. I absolutely will say that. Like my sneakers don't feel like they make sense and my heels because of just people's inability to want to shovel their driveways. I'm not about to fall and bust my booty butt cheeks. I am not about to injure myself, part three. And they've got like that thick lug sole with some grip on it, which again, super important considering that people are not taking care of their driveways, which I mean, I get, but it's also rude as hell. I'm probably going to layer my H&M coat over this just to have one more layer, but this is essentially the outfit. This isn't the one I'm going to shoot later. This is just what I'm wearing to the coffee shop to go ahead and get some work done. So let's go. Mm -hmm. 